Hello YouTube! It is week 18 of Training for the Big Sur Marathon. It is 18 days away. We're in my kitchen. It is a Wednesday afternoon. Exciting development of the day. I went and got trigger point acupuncture. I've gotten acupuncture before. I've gotten cupping before. You guys know that I'm kind of crazy with like trying any sort of therapy out there. So I didn't know what like trigger point acupuncture meant because one time I got dry needling, which I guess is different than acupuncture. Basically they put the needles in like a specific muscle that is tight, so it's really painful. I got it last year when I was in Australia with my family because um, I was having Achilles pain. And so if you can imagine like a needle going into the part of your Achilles that really hurts, that's what dry needling was. But trigger point acupuncture is actually from like the Eastern medicine practice of acupuncture. I've heard that dry needling is not like the same category, I guess. Like acupuncture tries to heal different ailments in the body by like putting a needle in your finger that relates to your liver. I'm making that up, but that's like an example. So trigger point acupuncture was like the same vibe. I told him that like my left leg has been having a lot of inflammation and my IT band is super tight, my quad, my hip, my glute, like the pain is just bouncing around. So he put needles in the front of my leg, all down my quad, my IT band, into my hip. The hip part like really hurt. You can imagine there's no like fat like right by your hip bone and so it just goes right in there. And after he puts the needles in, like acupuncture, you just sit with the needles in for like 30 minutes. So I was getting ready to relax. And then he's like, no, we're gonna use the TENS machine and put it into the needles. So you can imagine the needles are already in, right? He hooks it up to like an electromagnetic current that starts like vibrating. And my leg, since it was so tight, the muscles were twitching. So I was just laying down for 30 minutes each side, I did front and back, and my leg was twitching because of like the muscle fibers were so tight that it had to like loosen up. And honestly, it was weirdly satisfying. I don't know, like my pain tolerance is pretty high these days. I will try a lot of random stuff. While it was painful, I knew that it was gonna make me less painful like when I'm running, walking, living, etc. So I was like, just push through it for 30 minutes. But we're done with that. And then I had a four mile run today, but I am an idiot. And I didn't think about the fact that like you probably shouldn't run right after you get needles in you and that's what the acupuncturist said they're like yep just drink water like don't do any strenuous movement so i'm gonna push my four mile run tomorrow which is totally fine i'm tapering i'm running less running less intensity and volume i'm not doing like any more speed workouts any more lifting for the rest of the cycle my long run this weekend will be shortened it'll be to 12 miles this week which obviously is not getting me to the point of like running 18 or 20 miles before the marathon i've only run up to 16 miles before the race but with what my body's experiencing not really worth it and I just want to get to race day without any pain in the body. Past few days I've been iPhone-less which is like fine but it's also not fine because it's my job so I can't like take photos, videos, whatever. So I'm setting up a new iPhone right now. Super exciting sexy stuff over here. Gonna hang out with my boyfriend later and then yeah we'll get back to running tomorrow. I'll let you guys know how the body's feeling. I'm gonna pick up a new book. Hopefully I get a better book than last week but I think I'm gonna pick up a book on grief. It's a memoir that I've gotten recommended a bunch. Hi everyone, we are back from our four mile Thursday run, and you know what? Running can be so fun when you don't have pain radiating through your body. First run I've had in this past slump of an injury where I feel like I could get into a groove, I didn't feel like I was clunking left and right, you know, like feeling like Bambi on ice. I'm really happy right now. I just feel like a weight off my shoulder of like, oh yeah, running can feel good. You know, today I actually could look around and like look at people, look at all the tulips, listen to my music versus be stressed with like every single step. Makes me really confident going into this weekend. I'll have six miles tomorrow, 12 on Sunday. I just did a little Wegmans haul on our way home. Picked up some things I needed. Nothing in real order. Um, got some Epsom salt. Need to take a little bath right now. I need to shower first, but then I'll take a bath. Sumo oranges, they're almost out of season and I'm gonna be so depressed when I can't have one of these every single day. Raspberries, I'm gonna make some chia seed jam. All you have to do is get a little pot Put the entire bag in there with some water. These simmer and reduce so it's like a liquid. Then you'll add chia seeds and you can eyeball it. And then you can add a sweetener of choice. You could do like a honey, a blackstrap molasses, maple syrup. Got some olipops. I kind of have to have one of these every single day. Avocado because I want to eat more healthy fats. And this is really good in salads. I've been eating a lot of salmon and I just love how avocado and salmon work together. Mackerel. Uh, this is super easy to use after a run when you want protein. I think this has 18 grams of protein. Something like that. 17 grams of protein. I typically put this on top of an arugula salad. Really good source of protein, omega-3 fatty acids. I love mackerel so much. Gonna make some pickled red onions as well. But that's our Thursday. I will talk to you guys tomorrow when we gotta run. I've picked up the book for this video. Getting 1% better every single day and that's all that we can ask for. We're 17 days out from the marathon. Week 18, starting off strong.
Okay, hi YouTube. It is a Saturday and we're doing my favorite thing that is dicking around and walking around. One of my friend's birthdays is tonight, so I've been trying to find a sunny angel for her. 12 miles tomorrow for a long run. But we're enjoying the weather. My new vintage coat I got yesterday, I'm obsessed with. I feel like a little bit of like an Eskimo girly. Um, but yeah, that's Saturday. And reading my book about grief, but it's very sad. Sunday, we're getting ready to go on our 12 mile training run. No real notes for the run. It's gonna be an easy pace. I'm really hoping, fingers crossed, that this run is pain-free. I feel like my body's just getting better and better. Like it's gonna be better than last week where I had to do 16. So I'm excited. 12 is a lot more manageable than 16. And I know if you're not a runner, you're probably like, those both sound crazy long, but it's like an extra like 40 minutes on my feet that I do not want to really do. Writing news, I've decided what I'm gonna wear for the race. It's something by Planet Noosa and it doesn't have a pocket in it. So yesterday, I went to a running store to get one of these spy belts. Hi YouTube, it is a Monday morning here in New York City. It's week 18 of training for the Big Sur Marathon and we're gonna talk about the book that I read for this video. I just finished it up this morning. I did a deep clean of my apartment, got rid of like a bunch of old sweatshirts. So I have a bunch of running shoes that I've gotten to that like 300 mile point that are definitely worn out. So I'm gonna go donate them to a running store later. I have physical therapy at noon and then just gonna hang and edit videos. A lot of content that I have to do leading up to the race. So I'm gonna try to get that done. So then next week I can hopefully just relax, run, reflect, get out to California, all of those things. But the book that I read for this video is called Lost and Found, and this might be one of my favorite books that I read for the marathon series. It's definitely my favorite book that I've read on grief so far. If you're someone that's going through grief and loss, I really think this book is a very realistic approach to grief. The author talks about losing her dad in very similar circumstances to mine, so reading that was certainly very comforting. She talks about the loss of her dad, and then she talks about how she found her long-term partner shortly before her dad passed. And I'm kind of going through that right now. Now. A lot of the other books are like, it's gonna get better and the sun will shine and whatever. This is very realistic that loss happens, people can unexpectedly die all the time. The book puts loss in the context of life in a really beautiful way. Loss is inevitable, which is kind of scary to think about that you're gonna lose people you love throughout your life, but it's a skill to learn how to cope with it and it's a skill to be as prepared as you can for when those things come. I mentioned this in videos before, but after my dad passed, I think I forced myself to start seeing the good in everything. I could go down a negative rabbit hole I can think everything sucks and the world's out to get me it sucks it happened like not that I'm moving on from it because I know that grief is something that's gonna live with me forever but my dad wouldn't want me to sit around and sulk and not do anything with my life uh, I think the author shares a very similar approach to that the first part of the book is called lost the second part is called found and then the final part is called and a beautiful job of talking about how we can lose things we can find things how do you find love how do you find new relationships it's difficult it is to go through loss, no matter how small it is, like losing your keys or losing a parent. Then the second part, she talks about finding stuff, you know, maybe finding something you thought you lost or finding something brand new that you didn't expect. She talks about her experience of finding her partner, which I found to be just very beautiful and relatable for the part that I'm in in life. Um, it is crazy that unexpected loss can happen, but you also can unexpectedly find things that Maybe you were looking for, maybe you didn't know that you needed or you didn't know how they were going to matriculate into your life. It's very beautiful to think that you can find new stuff every day and the universe can always give you these blessings. I've definitely become more spiritual after my dad has passed. Everything that's thrown my way, I know it's something that I can handle. There's going to be a lot of joy that I get to experience in life. There's gonna be a lot of happy memories and accomplishments that I can have. It's gonna be weird, you know, moving through life without my dad. I'm definitely going to be thinking about him as I do everything, as I run Big Sur, as I get married one day, as I have grandkids. The profound sadness of knowing that he's not there. And the author talks about this picture at her wedding where there was this like empty space and she was like, that's where my dad should have been. And I've had that thought with like everything that has happened to me. I'm like, my dad should know about this. My dad should get to see me run the New York City Marathon. He should get to see my partner right now and he should get to meet him. And really sucks, but I think it's important to be vulnerable with it and honor those feelings when they do come up. You know, I've been very lucky that my boyfriend allows me to talk about my dad. Um, I think I was really nervous about opening up about that with someone, just I don't want to unload on someone. It's also a really new thing for me. And I think I just was really worried after my dad passed that like I'm gonna be so emotionally dysregulated that I'm not going to be able to find a partner that like wants to deal with me. Clearly, I have found that and it was very unexpected 
that it worked out in my favor, but I'm very happy with it. I also didn't know I was gonna start crying. Literally, my mom and I talk every day about how crying just like happens and it's just automatic. It just comes out when I think about shit. But this book was really good. It clarified a lot for me. Uh, it comforted me a lot. If you're experiencing grief or if you're experiencing any form of loss, I think this is a really great read. It's also just very philosophical about loss and how that shapes life and everyone's gonna have to experience loss. So whether or not you've experienced it, I think it could be a good, like not preparation I wanna say, but just a good read on loss. I had my long run yesterday, 12 miles. It went well. The race is in 13 days. I'm going to head off to physical therapy and I'll keep you guys updated for week 19. But thank you so much for watching. I'm so excited to run this race and take you guys along. I will talk to you in the next video. Have a good rest of your week.